The following tutorial is brought to you by WholeLoops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. Today, we've got another special guest, and we're going to call him up right now on Skype because he's got a whole lot to share with us. So let's go. What's up, man? Hey, Reed. How are you, man? Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, I'm glad you want to have me on, the, on your show. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Dutch producer extraordinaire coming to us from Aruba, Martin Vorwerk. And uh, he actually just released something really, really exciting for the producer community. And that is a producer tips handbook. So, st let's start out by just sharing with us a little bit about this handbook. Well, this handbook uh, is is came along in the last four years already. So for now, we are in the fourth year that I'm putting out like a weekly tip about music production or the music industry itself. And I thought it would be cool to bundle all those tips into one book. Absolutely. And I, th when I got to the first page, it summarized it so well when I reopened it today after having read it. The first page says making a hit is easier than getting paid for it. And I was trying to figure out today absolutely to, yeah. <laughs> to summarize the book. And I was like, okay, I got to open up the book again and figure this out. And it was right there on the first page. And what a magnificent summary of this book it was. Because this is, for the most part, jam-packed, loaded with content specifically about production, tips for making True. things sound better, louder, wider, whatever it is that you're looking for, things that you didn't even know you were looking for you find in this book and this is not just a book for advanced music producers this is a book for music producers who need the fundamental explanation of stuff so i learned so much reading this book and i think you guys will too i had three questions for you that sure. were uh things that didn't literally get covered in the book that i was kind of curious about so i'm just going to start with number one outside yeah. of the laptop stuff what do you think is the most important <clears throat> skill to have in the music industry, uh, I think uh, definitely patience for me. I mean, sometimes you can make a really great song in, in a day or so, but then you have to find the right vocalist, uh, find yep. the right top line. And when you finally have those, you need to find the right label. And they are also very into the schedule. So, yeah, yeah sometimes it could take up like six months eight months to release your your, your track finally so yeah. you're gonna need to to have a lot of patience i think absolutely for me it's uh probably going outside or even more so knowing when to go outside or yeah. how to go outside or what to do to give your brain that uh replenishing Reset. experience so that you have yeah. something to come back to the studio with because if you're True. in this for the long haul it's it's a daily game you know so if, if you don't have something in your brain to put down it's going to be a really rough day so for me it's definitely knowing when to go outside all right question number two absolutely which step of the music making pro process takes the most time or which do you end up spending the most time on well for me that's like the final 10 percent of a track so that's like literally the automation uh cutting off reverb tails, um, muting all the stuff that is actually too much in your track. Mm -hmm. So usually at the end of the track, I I usually delete like 40, 50% of it and just keep all the essential things. Um, yeah, and a lot of auto automation. So yeah, yeah that, that takes up a lot of time. Yeah, my answer would definitely Absolutely. be the same. It's like a day of adding stuff and then just a week of <laughs> deleting stuff. And, exactly. Uh, yeah. That's that's been the process for me. Yeah. And uh, all right. So the third question: If you had to pick four plugins, since everyone loves plugins, 
to master your songs with? Like four for your master bus chain, which four would you pick? Um, I definitely go with the the glue compressor. I like that one a lot. Which one? Um, from from what is it? Cy- Cytomic or something? Yep. Yeah. Um, I really love the Diamond EQ. Yep. From uh, Luca Preto Lazy. Yep. I just start using it, but it's, it really opens up your mix a lot more. And especially at the end, that's just a little bit of extra, which, which yeah, adds so much to your track. That's awesome. Uh, I really like using the, um, the T-Rex Stealth Limiter. For me, that's one of the, the, the clearest ones and that can make your track really, really loud. Oh, yeah. And the isotope, why not? The multiband compressor of the isotope when it's necessary. I always have isotope. I have, uh, I have one from Luca on my list too and one from isotope. My list yeah. would be uh, the SSL compressor from UAD. I just love the way that one sounds into their uh, Brainworks, the BX3 EQ. Yeah. Because how easy it makes the mid-side stuff. I just use yeah. the mid-side knobs at the bottom all the time, and that always ends up working on songs. Luca just put out a new plugin called Lift. And, um, oh, yeah. I need to check with that one out too, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's insane. It's a, I, I'm going to do a whole separate video with this in it. It's a... Uh, clipper and an eq with low end and high end exciter sometimes i don't even use yeah. anything but just the low end and high end exciter and then my favorite limiter ooh <sighs> probably the tough f- one yeah i would have to give it to the slate fgx just because of how hard you can crank that thing and yeah. um if i just had to pick one that one's always on it just for the final crank so slate fgx all yeah. right so you have prepared awesome. a tutorial for us that I absolutely love. It actually follows a topic that we have been covering in this channel a lot recently, which is making things wider because no matter what kind of music you make, there's a good chance that there's going to be a vocal right in the center of your music. And any tip to make a sound wider, whether it's a background vocal like in your example, or you could probably use this trick on just about anything but a kick, a snare, and a, a bass. It's a very exactly. useful trick. Um, exactly. Exactly. So let's... uh, Yeah, let's start it in. I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, thanks for having me on your show. Thank you so much and uh, enjoy the tutorial. Thank you. (laughs) It's production time. But today, not with Reed Stefan, the realest puppet in the game, but with Marta Vorek. And I'm coming to you straight from my studio in Aruba. And today, I want to show you how to make a mono signal sound more stereo. So what I have here is a vocal recording. Let's have a listen. For miles and miles down the boulevard, lit my world on fire from the very start in my heart. It couldn't let you go. Now, as you can hear and see on the vector scope on the right, there's not much going on. Like everything is going straight through the middle. So, to make it more stereo, what do you want to do here? Uh, is the following: is uh, create an auxiliary send bus or a group bus, at least anything that you can make mono in Studio One. You can find that option right here. And then on the bus track, you will place, um, in my case, uh, a mono delay, the H delay from the Waves package. I chose for a quarter delay and I did not put the dry wet fully to 100%, but just to a quarter or so. And then we're going to send the delay signal back to the original vocal track. And what you want to do next is try to match the two volumes together. For miles and miles down the boulevard, lit my world on fire from the very start. In my heart, it couldn't let you go. 
For miles and miles down the boulevard, live my world on. Okay, and now we're gonna pan the vocal track to the left. In this case, I'm going for halfway, and the delay track, we're gonna pan it to the right. Also half, also halfway. And now we're gonna listen again. On fire from the very star in my heart. It couldn't let you go. For miles and miles. And now, as you can see in here now, on the vector scope, the vocal is a bit wider. And also, uh, what you notice is that the delay signal isn't really bothering the dry signal either. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this trick. Uh, if you want to learn more, you can check out my, my book in the description below. Or you could even book a private online one-on-one -on -one session. For more information on that, you can visit my Facebook page. Back to you, Reed, and thanks for having me. Do you love the secret sauce? Are you constantly searching the internet for hidden treasures to improve your production time? Look no further, my friends. We've got a gold mine for you. Introducing Tip of the Week by Marne Nouveau Work, the new holy bible for beat makers. Whether your mix downs are so weak, they clear dance floors, or you're looking for that missing piece to solve your production puzzle. Vowork's ultimate handbook has the secret for your sauce. Tip of the week is available as hard copy or digital download at martinvowork.shop.